Hello everyone and welcome to this video going over the new killer and survivor brought to us in the chapter Demise of the Faithful, which is available to play now on the public test build. The new killer is called The Plague, and her ability is Vile Purge. Here is how it works. You hold down the power button to charge Vile Purge, and if you want to cancel this ability, all you have to do is press the attack button. Now, while you are charging Vile Purge, your movement speed will be reduced. At full charge, there is no movement speed penalty, so you can be ready to shoot at any time during the chase. When you release the power button, then a stream of infectious bile will go shooting outwards in the direction that you are facing. You can move your camera around to control where the stream goes as you spit out bile. That way you can make sure to hit any survivors you are chasing. You do not need to charge to full to use this ability. You can let go sooner to shoot bile at the cost of it going a shorter distance and ending sooner. Survivors hit by the bile will become infected and have part of their screen obscured. As the survivor gets sicker, more of their screen gets covered. As a survivor, you can tell how close you or your teammates are to being fully infected by watching their profiles in the bottom left corner. You will see the circle around survivors who have some sickness, and it will slowly fill to full as they get closer to being fully infected. A survivor accumulates an amount of infection by being hit by the bile, running, or performing any interactions. So this includes generators, healing, searching chest, cleansing totems, and even vaulting. Environmental objects also become infected for a short duration when hit by the stream of bile. Survivors who touch these objects will gain some sickness. If the survivor's infection indicator is completely filled, the survivor is forced to vomit and will continue to do so at random intervals. However, this vomiting does not seem to interrupt any actions, it's just a visual and audio thing. The survivor will also become injured if they aren't already, and gain the broken status effect, meaning they cannot heal to full. They will also pass on their infection to other survivors and environmental objects that they interact with. So if you are infected, you do not want to heal anybody else or else you will get them infected as well. And everything you touch turns green. Infected survivors can remove all infection and will be healed to full by interacting with a pool of devotion. The auras of these pools are revealed to survivors as soon as they get even a little bit of sickness. Only one survivor can use a pool though, because after a survivor drinks from one, it will transform into a corrupted pool, which only the killer can interact with. If all pools become corrupted at the same time, then they will all revert to their clean state. Be aware that when the pool changes, the killer will hear this sound. The pool's aura will be revealed to her, and she can drink from them. When the killer drinks from a corrupted pool, all survivors will hear the sound instead. And for a limited time, her power transforms into a corrupt purge. This makes her ability damage any survivor's hit by one health state, but will not apply infection. She can damage multiple survivors at the same time while she has corrupt purge. When she is empowered, she will have this red particle effect around her, and her bile changes to a red color instead of green. Now let's move on to her three unique perks, which are Corrupt Intervention, Infectious Fright, and Dark Devotion. Corrupt Intervention. Three generators located the furthest from you are blocked by the entity for 80, 100, or 120 seconds at the start of the trial. Survivors cannot repair these generators, for the duration. Infectious Fright Any survivors that are within the killer's terror radius while another survivor is put into the dying state with your basic attack will yell and reveal their aura to the killer for 4, 5, or 6 seconds. And Dark Devotion. You become obsessed with one survivor. Hitting the obsession with your basic attack causes the obsession to emit a 32 meter terror radius for 20 seconds. 
During that time, your terror radius is reduced to zero. This effect can only be triggered once every 60, 45, or 30 seconds. The obsession will also hear the terror radius that they emit for the duration. Now that you know her power and perks, let's take a quick look at her add-ons. Black Incense. Survivor auras are revealed to you for 5 seconds when they vomit. Iridescent Seal. Moderately decreases movement speed while holding Corrupt Purge. Tremendously decreases the duration of Corrupt Purge. Vile Purge becomes Corrupt Purge every time a generator is completed. Devotee's Amulet. Considerably increases duration of Corrupt Purge. Severed Toe. Considerably increases the rate survivors gain infection from interactions. Vile Emetic. Considerably increases Vile Purge effectiveness. Worship Tablet. Moderately decreases Pool of Devotion activation time. Moderately increases movement speed while holding Corrupt Purge. Ashen Apple. Start trial with one Pool of Devotion corrupted. Slightly increases infection time on objects. Exorcism Amulet. Moderately increases the duration of Corrupt Purge. Incensed Ointment. Slightly increases movement speed while charging Vile Purge. Moderately decreases Vile Purge cooldown. Infected Emetic. Moderately increases Vile Purge effectiveness. Rubbing Oil. Moderately increases Vile Purge charge speed. Blessed Apple. Start trial with one pool of devotion already corrupted. Emetic Potion. Slightly increases Vile Purge effectiveness. Hematite Seal. Moderately increases infection time on objects. Potent Tincture. Moderately decreases Vile Purge cooldown. Prophylactic Amulet. Slightly increases duration of Corrupt Purge. Healing Salve. Slightly decreases Vile Purge cooldown. Limestone Seal. Slightly increases infection time on objects. Oli Benum Incense. Slightly increases movement speed while charging Vile Purge. Prayer Tablet Fragment. Slightly decreases Pool of Devotion activation time. Slightly increases movement speed while holding Corrupt Purge. The new survivor is Jane Romero. Her perks are Solidarity, Poised, and Head On. Solidarity. While injured, healing a survivor without using a medkit also heals you at 40, 45, or 50% the conversion rate. You can heal to full using this perk. Poised. After a generator is completed, you leave no scratch marks for 6, 8, or 10 seconds. And head on. While standing in a locker for 3 seconds, the perk activates. While the perk is activated, performing a rushed action to leave the locker stuns the killer for 3 seconds if they are standing within range. Causes the exhausted status effect for 60, 50, or 40 seconds. Head-on cannot be used while exhausted. You do not recover from the exhausted status effect while running. And that is the new killer and the new survivor. Now one last thing I want to show you guys before I end this video is the decisive strike change. Just because I know that this is a perk a lot of survivors use and a lot of killers have to deal with. And so it's a big change that I should point out. They have changed decisive strike so that now it says after being unhooked or unhooking yourself, decisive strike will become active and usable for 40, 50, or 60 seconds. While Decisive Strike is active, when grabbed by the killer, succeed a skill check to automatically escape the killer's grasp and stun the killer for 3 seconds. Succeeding or failing the Decisive Strike skill check will disable the perk. Successfully stunning the killer will result in you becoming the obsession. It increases your chance of being the obsession, and the killer can only be obsessed with one survivor at a time. This makes Decisive Strike a more risky perk to run because you cannot use it unless you have just been saved from a hook. And you have to be downed within that time frame in order to be able to use it. Everything I have said is in the public test build, so you guys can go try it out for yourself if you want to if you play on the PC. All of these things I mentioned in the video are subject to change and could be adjusted before they officially release, so keep that in mind. 
I will make a full video on the patch 2.6 notes when they go live because I want to make sure that I have all the accurate information about what is exactly going into the game. I just wanted to get this out for you guys so you could see the new killer and survivor because it's just a big thing and everyone wants to know about it. I will be posting a link to the PTB's patch 2.6 notes in the description below. Thank you everybody for watching, I hope you found this video informative, and feel free to comment below about what you think about this new chapter and also what you think about the decisive strike change. As always, good luck out there in the fog, and see you next time.